Hey, welcome to me. This is a different kind of video. I don't even know if I'll be editing it or not because it's the morning of August 11th. And um, I'm gonna cut to the chase. The short of it is uh, yesterday, it was determined that um, it's in my best interest that I go back to the hospital. So I'm gonna be gone. I don't know for how long. Um, I have a gut feeling that it might even it might be longer than the last time. Um, I guys want to talk about it because I've had 24 hours to process this. I did talk about this a, several hours ago now on Instagram stories, and um, I made a post on my, for my Facebook friends. But I've just kind of been sitting with this and getting myself to a space to feel better about it and kind of taking the situation by the, by the you know, the horns and in a whole new light because, you know, I talked about how I went to the hospital last time and this is a whole other scenario because for me that treatment launched me into getting into the therapy. I've been doing um, full-time intensive outpatient. I've been doing bi-weekly psych appointments. I hired a nutritionist recently. Um, I've, been, so I've been doing a lot of different things in terms of my care, working with my um, PH, my PCP, excuse me. Um, so basically as I've talked in some of my vlogs and stuff, um, I'm actually, I think I'm doing better right now cause I'm not trialing a med at the moment. Um, I'm still really struggling with my depression and, um, things like that. But some of these meds were getting me to the point of very extreme mental health sym symptoms. If you can kind of catch the drift there. Um, and, uh, we ain't having that. I'm here to heal. I'm here to get this figured the fuck out. And my psych told me yesterday that it was one of the like worst messages I've ever gotten from a doctor in my life. And I mean, hey, thankfully there are worse messages that I have yet to receive. But in terms of my mental health care, um, my doctor told me that he's basically at a loss of what to do because I've had so many negative, uh, I've had so many severe negative reactions to so many different uh medication classes that he feels the best next best steps are for me to go somewhere where they can be monitored on a daily basis and see what happens because the truth of this reality means that I've finally gotten through enough therapy enough of my mental health work and um had the privilege to be on this medical leave long enough to do this to get to the point where I could leave this scenario being essentially labeled as treatment resistant or medication resistant. And that's a scary place to be. But there are people like that that exist and I have been fearful that that's me. And um, that's one of the reasons why I've struggled with, you know, medications and, and the like. I'm really nervous. Sorry, y'all. I think there's just a real chance that you know, I could maybe get lucky and figure things out because the one med I'm on helps in some aspects. I am not as symptomatic as I was in, back in April, but um, I am concerned, man. <laughs> and um, I already know how much medical debt I've accrued, but you know, my quality of life matters and I'm at least in a place where I have good insurance so yeah I don't know I kind of just wanted to let you guys know this and like be able to see me and know I'm okay and like I don't want people to worry like I didn't want to just like fuck off the internet and people be like oh my god where's Rosie what's going on with Rosie you know especially some of the people who followed me for a long time who witnessed what I went through back in April um you know I don't want to scare them that, that would be the last thing I want to do. So, um, you know, this time I know more of what to expect. In fact, I can't bring any of this, any of my, a lot, when I went last time, I had my headphones, I had my sunglasses, my necklaces, all, all the, I don't think I own the Fitbit yet, but, um, so I, I, I hate not wearing my jewelry, but it's time to take it off. So, yeah. I don't know, man. It's, this is a different 
scenario for me. Um, I never saw reality a year ago that I would willingly be going to an inpatient setting like this. Um, I don't really think I've talked about this a whole lot on my channel. So I guess since I'm here, I'm just going to kind of chat because I'm nervous and I'm going to miss you guys. And um, I am a little scared. Not as scared as last time. I was petrified last time. Because in 2020, um, I was I was medically kidnapped. And I won't trauma dump into a ton of the specifics. But basically, I was given medication that made me incoherent. Given paperwork and told if I didn't sign it, sign it the state wouldn't pay for my care. And I was not um, lucid enough to understand I was signing an involuntary hold piece of paperwork and then I was held for a total of five and a half days because of how they shuffled things around and I experienced some of the most heinous medical malpractice of my life at uh, Anchor Mental Hospital in College Park Georgia if you read the reviews that that place is deplorable and I was sent there because I did not have insurance I witnessed them abuse elders there. I witnessed a lot of horrific things in those walls. It was I won't trauma dump right now, but it happened. It started three days after January first. If you watched my most recent video, that's what I said. I don't remember a ton about that time. What I remember most was the hospital stay. So that's why when I've talked about the fact I even went to the hospital at all in April being such a big deal, I never saw myself making a decision like this. So I'm really proud of myself because this is what's best for me and my care. And I am, like, I'm worried that I'm saying all of this and I'm going to do all of this and, like, there ends up not being a bed available for me or something. I have an action plan. I went ahead and I grabbed one of my, like, little journals and I wrote out some phone numbers. And, like, I, I kind of know what to expect now. So I've, like, packed a bag with the clothes, you know, no strings. You know, I, I remember some of the rules and um, I'm going to have my mom stop off somewhere so I can buy a big box of washable markers so I can have my own markers um, while I'm there because um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write a lot while I'm there I think and um, I'm gonna take this time um, to see if we can really hone this in or not because then this is gonna kind of can like this is gonna kind of determine the trajectory that my treatment goes from here Y'all have been seeing me struggle, you know, I've been tr trying to not put so much of my bullshit on the internet and I think for the most part I've been doing pretty good about that, but I've still been really depressed and just battling my MDD and just losing it feels like and, you know, feels like I'm losing and, but you know, I do have friends that let me know, you know. I always do get back up, so I, I guess that's not losing, right? None of this is fair to me. None of this is fun. But, um, I'm really hoping that this decision and this process of trusting my doctors is going to lead into me being where I need to be to build the life that I deserve to have. So, um, yeah. I feel weird not wearing my things. Like, look. <laughs> hard to relinquish control um oh one of my high school friends just texted me oh, that was so sweet um sorry um 
this has been an immensely difficult process. And um, I don't know if I've said this or not, but I just want to make this clear. I am not making this for pity or sympathies. I, I want to vlog my life and this is my life. I am fighting for my mental health. And I have definitely, even in recent history, made decisions that are coming from places that I wish I, I hadn't been in, you know, getting sucked into communities that don't really um, serve the purpose of like what my goals are in my content or in my life or, you know, being too trusting of people, things like that. And just also, you know, not doing my due diligence and and all the like. So I'm going to moisturize. I just like I, I got this new shampoo that I've been using from JVN and my hair has never felt better. I might actually pay full price for this shampoo and conditioner. I finally found something that doesn't make my hair look awful all the time. I'll see how it starts working, you know, after 24 hours, but I've been really struggling with my hair. Yeah, let's let's change the topic to something lighter, right, guys? But I just wanted to make something to upload um cuz I just I don't want I don't want to make people worry. You know? And um I think so many people in this world deserve the opportunity for what I'm going to go do and they don't get it. I'm not going to squander this chance that I have while I'm on this leave just to keep doing the same shit over and over again and not getting the results that I need. I have been doing this shit for three months. It is August 10th. My leave started April 27th. That's crazy. And I'm slightly less depressed, but not really. Not by any impressive margin. And that's, that's kind of crazy to me, man. I don't know why. And these meds end up making me like even more symptomatic to the point of like like feeling like there's no point you know and my emotional mind can think that all day long but my ma my rational mind knows why the fuck I'm here and what my purpose is and what my goals are and I can keep talking about them in abstracts but I'm not going to be able to achieve them if I'm drowning in the chemical misfirings of my brain in the unchecked trauma responses and things like that so, I appreciate you guys a lot, and um, I don't know how long I'm going to be gone for. Um, honestly, my plan is to stay there until they either kick me out or they fix this. I really hope this can get fixed, because sometimes... Especially with like neurodivergent people. Um, there are just people that are far more sensitive to these medications and end up just really having issues getting um, any kind of um, medication that actually helps them. Um, you know, a lot of people can end up, you know, having certain ones that help more, are able to help, right? But there are people that just don't respond. And if that's me, that's a harsh reality. So, I don't know what's gonna happen, but 
any like if anything crazy happens you guys should just like send me messages and let me know while i'm gone if there's like any crazy tea i should know about i'm gonna want to come back and get it all know what the his app is <laughs> whenever i can get back we can have a little live party i i was so i was so happy when i got out of the hospital because i felt so good for for where i was at when i went in i knew i had a long way to go i knew it was just the beginning and um that that wasn't the damn truth Shit. i don't know i'm just gonna kind of rambling and talking to you guys so i'm gonna go edit this i'm gonna i have to wait a little bit for my mom to wake up but um so i'll just I, i'll just kind of splice out some of my rambles But I just, I think what I really want to drive home here is like, I'm so excited that I get to do this from a place of like calm and planning and preparing and having an action plan for the purpose of healing in, instead of it being just like, you know, pure crisis, unorganized chaos, you know, being so non-lucid that I struggle to even advocate for myself and my own care. Because giving up your phone, doing this shit, um, you know, being restricted to the, the time schedules and all the rules and um you know the dietary restrictions and things like that that happen at these places it's hard it's hard i'm not particularly excited but i am thankful for the opportunity so and i'm thankful for allowing myself to do this and not trying to just rationalize my way out of it. <laughs>